Hello, uh, welcome to this Aston Originals podcast from Aston History. My name is Brian Sudlow. I'm a lecturer in history at Aston University. Um, are you an A-level student who's looking for advice uh, about their exam uh, coming up this summer? Well, in which case, uh, you've clicked on the right video. Today, I have with me Mr. John Dyson. Uh, Mr. Dyson is head of history at Broadway Academy School in, uh, in in Birmingham, and he's got over 20 years experience in, in secondary education. He's taught um, A-level students throughout his career uh, in history. He's marked and produced schemes of work for OCR and for uh, Edexcel. Um, and also, John is a historian in his own right. He's researched and written and published two best-selling books about the history of Sheffield Wednesday Football Club. John, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me. So, look, I'm just going to hand over to you. John, um, what are your five top tips for any of the students wanting to pass their exams in the summer? Yeah, they, at, this, at this time of year, as it's getting towards what Sir Alex Ferguson called squeaky uh, squeaky bum time. Uh, five, five tips, I suppose, in, in, no, in no particular order. Um, Number one, if, if any students are still working on their NEA coursework, um, that is, of course, 20% of the final grade, so it's, it's important, but not that vital that the students need to chase down every last mark when there's 80% of the marks uh, remaining in the exam. So my advice there is, is get it finished. Uh, follow, follow your school's uh, deadlines, get it finished, get it in, and focus on the remaining 80% for as much of the time uh, the have remaining as you can. Fantastic. So that's number one. What's number two? Number one. Number two. Uh, get your materials together. Make sure you know what you need to know. Uh, textbooks, revision guides, learning checklists, your student books and notes. Uh, remembering, of course, that A-level includes material from year 12 and that there's always plenty of material to read around the read around the subject. John, can I just ask you, would you recommend um, people, you know, maybe watching little videos if they're like quality videos to help that? Or would you say, no, just stick to the stick to the good sources you've got? Uh, I'd, I'd recommend a bit of both. There, there is always plenty around around the subject. Uh, I'll, I'll go to number three in a minute about uh, about knowledge, um, which is probably slightly controversial. But but knowledge of uh, history, uh, AQA at least, say is a, is a lower order skill. Uh, some some students spend spend their time kind of building up knowledge and building up knowledge and learning learning lots of facts, uh, which is which is fine. But those facts have to go somewhere. And so I would say at this stage in year uh, in year thirteen, maybe just row back a little bit on that. And number three, spend maybe half your revision time or thereabouts practicing for the exam and improving the skills that are that are needed. Uh, any teacher would be genuinely delighted. Uh, to mark work that students have come up with, to go over paragraphs, to talk about how to approach the exam. Uh, so so point, point number three, fo focus on the skills as much as the knowledge. Can I just ask you, would teachers share mark schemes with with students? Is that is that something that uh, teachers should be doing? Yeah, I think so. That That is uh, point number four on my list, which is get, getting, <laughs> inside the, uh, which is good. getting inside the head of the examiners. Yeah, make, make sure as a student you've got uh, access to the, uh, the, there are generic mark schemes which cover every every question. Uh, if they don't make sense, ask your teacher to, to explain them. Uh, there are specific mark schemes for previous year's questions. They're worth, they're worth looking over and thinking about the knowledge and skills that the examiners were looking for uh, that time round. Uh, could you, as a student, match that with a with a similar question or a different one? Uh, finally, every examiner, uh, every exam board rather, uh, publishes the examiner's reports on the previous year's exams. Uh, they're well worth reading. Have a look, see what students did well or not so well in previous years, and again, what can what can the students do? Uh, relate, okay. really, and so related to that is, is making sure that the students understand. I suppose the fit to my point understand that the students um, understand what they're going to be examined on. Um, assessment objectives are the same across all, all exam boards. There's only three of them in history. Uh, AO1 is about knowledge and the, and the kind of key concepts, change and continuity, that sort of thing. AO2 is about source analysis, and AO3 is about historical interpretation. Uh, those assessment objectives are vary by percentage and by topic and by paper. So uh, my, my top tip to students is making sure they understand what each paper is asking them to do, which of those three it's focusing on. Um, what does each paper require you to think about? Is it a depth study uh, or is it a breadth study? Is it something focusing down on a, on a shorter period of time or a longer period of time? 
Uh, and each example will give you the key areas of focus. Uh, I'll give you an example at the minute. My, my year 13s are, are studying the Crusades. And one area of focus is is the differing uh, relationship to the Byzantine world, the Crusaders themselves, and the, and the Muslim world. And regardless of which part of the course we're, we're studying, that's one of the key themes. So my, my kind of kind of final point on that is that the students understand what those key themes are um, for each of their papers. That's brilliant. John, if there's one last piece of advice you give to students, what would that be? Yeah, finally, nothing else, if nothing else, a colleague of mine has a, has a wonderful acronym, ATFQ, and it stands for Answer the Flipping Question. Uh, use, your, use your knowledge, your understanding of what the examiner is looking for to directly answer the question that comes up in the exam. So in the exam, take a deep breath, Think, plan, then ATFQ. ATFQ, just write it on your page, put it there, write it at the, at the, at the top of your page. You know, I tell my students, every time you come to start a new paragraph or even a new sentence, go back, look at the question and just recalibrate what you're writing with the terms of the question. John, this has been fantastic. Thank you ever so much. Um, and uh, so uh, hopefully these tips will be uh, really uh, helpful to you as you're preparing for your uh, A-level exam. We wish you all the best with that and see you again soon, hopefully on uh, another Aston History podcast.